Today goes to Dunkirk landfill for the third time to distribute solar device for impoverished households. Taipei City Hospital cultivates new employees' compassion through home visits for impoverished families. Welcome to Dai Headlines. I'm Margaret Lin. Thank you for joining us. Hundreds of families in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, made their living by being dumpster divers, and most of them rely on candles for lighting. City volunteers went there for the third time to distribute solar device, which can improve their lighting. <laughs> Residing beside the garbage, most of the residents wear a straw hat and long sleeves clothing to resist the sunshine and mosquitoes. These are the bare necessities for the hundreds of households in the garbage mountain. On this day, visitors who are also old friends came to the garbage mountain. It is so sunny, everyone is in the sun. Although the sun rays so strong, it is good for solar energy. There's no electricity in my home. The solar device I receive can illuminate my home and charge my mobile. The electricity fee is very expensive here. From now on, we can use solar energy in the evening. We can save a lot of money. I can help if the neighbors doesn't know how to install it. By the end of the distribution, the volunteers visit the household one by one to assist in installation of the solar panel. It is more convenient for my kids to have dinner after having a lamp at home because we often arrive home very late after picking the garbage. We used to have dinner when it was dark. I'm very sad to see this kind of living situation. It's hard to believe that the children are born in such an environment. What we can contribute is actually very little. I hope that the solar device we donated will help the children to read at night. and Their living condition can be changed gradually through education in the future. This light not only illuminates the surroundings, but also illuminates the children's life path and helps combat poverty. After Cyclone Idai devastated three countries of Eastern Africa, Tsiji not only held air distributions, but now they have also launched a construction assistance program. Through the visits to Tsiji Indonesia chapter, the son of Mozambican Prime Minister has learned how Tsiji helped build a great love village in Indonesia after 2004 South Asia tsunami. He hopes that such experience can also be carried out in Mozambique. Focusing on the video which introduces to the Indonesia chapter, this guest who visits the Jin Ho in Jakarta is the son of Mozambican Prime Minister Carlos. The most important purpose of his trip this time is to thank Tsiji on behalf of the residents in Mozambique for their disaster relief aid after Cyclone Idai. I really want to thank also Tsiji for the work they've been doing in Mozambique so far for the relief uh, of the hurricane we had and uh, seeing the work in the environmental front, humanitarian front. Over the past six months after Cyclone Idai, Tsiji's love for Mozambique remains. First of all, we need to let the government of Mozambique know about Tsiji. 
They should know that Zuji is a charity organization with no political background. It's merely a nonprofit organization. This way, the application for helping with construction in Mozambique will run smoothly. Besides expanding love in Mozambique, Zuji also gathers love from around the world. This aid will continue to be carried out after Carlos visits Zuji Indonesia chapter. Barriers of religion not being a problem. This is a very, very, very good message that we look forward to bringing to Mozambique. So all we're waiting for is Bill Susi, please do come. Uh, and please, we're, we're looking forward to working with you. Mozambique has lower literacy rates than other countries. This is because many children in Mozambique cannot finish elementary school, as they have to start working when they are in grade two or three. School is in session, but some classrooms are in a mess. In one morning, the three schools we went to were empty. At several schools in Namadanda, we saw tents donated by charity groups being used as classrooms. The school we're now at is EPC Diumuda Mufo. Today is the first day of school, but there's nobody in the classrooms. The children did come to the school today, but then they have gone home. It is very common that children in villages cannot go to school. Their elementary school is from grade 1 to 7, but the number of students will decrease as the grades go up. At grade 1, there may be over 300 students, but the number will decrease, and when they reach grade 7 and those who can graduate are down to 50 to 60. They have good schedules. In languages, they have French, Portuguese, and English. They also have PE, social studies, science, civics, and morality. They also have a computer class, but they use textbooks to teach about computers. None of the schools has computer, and their music class doesn't have an instrument either. People here live hard lives. When I go to the school, I often see there are only 30 to 40 students in the classroom. When 70 to 80 students should be there, I asked where the other students were, and the students would tell me they were called by their fathers to farm the land or to fetch water. Their lives are poor. It is free from grade 1 to 7, but they are prevented from attending school. On the way to Tika, a group of children are using axes and hoes to strike the road. After they have been hitting the roads for three hours and producing this pile of rocks for constructions, they can earn around US $4. Normally here in Mozambique, as you know, that the, the life is so difficult, so many people are poor. So what they think that uh, to send children to school yeah, is better, but uh, they, they, they say that it's better to send them to find something, maybe to get money to support them. The scheduled Alamigo High School has a class on farming. It is a required course. The information from the UN shows that 80% of Mozambicans depend on farming for their livelihoods. In May and June, or even July and August, it is time to harvest vegetables, and people need to sell them on the street, and kids must go with their parents to sell the crops. The weather is colder here, so it's more suitable to grow vegetables like tomatoes or lettuce. Cyclone Itai once submerged a very large piece of green farms, but now the crops are back again. A class for seniors in Kaohsiung teaches the participants how to make clothes. Over the past five years, the seniors have made 3,000 dresses for the children in Africa. When these seniors receive thank you cards from the children, they feel quite happy. <laughs> Some people are busy mending the borders while some are cutting clothes. These seniors who are in their 70s are making clothes for children in Africa. We can learn skills and do things we want to do. So we don't need to sit at home, but we can help people. I feel happy to give love to them. For the past five years, these elderly have sent out 3,000 dresses. An experienced tailor also comes to help them. The clothes are fixed in shape, so I change the shape of the pockets to make it pretty. 
66-year-old Wu Qingying had a tumor on the river and also suffered from the stroke before, but she still came to help. While I can still move hands, they won't wither. While I am alive, I want to do certain things, so the kids out there can feel my love. When the elderly see their grandchildren will not be so happy over just one piece of clothing, they will realize what they do is quite meaningful after they make a comparison. Wearing new dresses, these children are smiling happily. The love in these clothes will be passed down forever. Tima in Taoyuan held a free clinic at a local center for the disabled with various medical services provided. There were also sign language translators helping people with hearing impairments. Five medical departments are staffed by the Tima members to help people with hearing impairments. Wow. 就还好，这个白鹭台风离去了，是算我们的运气好。说我们 ，I'm glad that Typhoon Bailu has gone, so we're lucky to have free clinics as planned. And also want to thank Ziji and every brother and sister for giving your great love to serve everyone. 只要把脉哦，那个不用。I can tell his health condition just by examining his pulse, and no need to ask him. So I feel honored today to come here and treat these silent angels. Medical consultation is a very important process, so many sign language translators also came to volunteer. It's all right, just do more exercise, drink more water and do more exercise. A mobile pharmacy has been set up on the same spot, so the patients can also receive their medicines. The one-stop service can benefit these patients. A well-known new employee orientation activity of the incoming medical staff at Taipei City Hospital is to clean up houses for some individuals. The new medical professionals have cultivated compassion and learned about City's humanitarian medical care through the cleanup efforts. The 100 square meter room is full of rubbish, and there is almost no space to stand. 50 medical staff and Gigi volunteers are working together to transfer the bags of garbage, including a 20 kilogram of discarded refrigerator, from the fifth floor to the first floor. Gigi volunteers have tidied up here before, though it still looks quite messy now. We need to pack the garbage first, follow up by cleaning. We may also need to check the current medication of the patient. It took two hours to make room for cleaning finally. The three brothers, aged about 30, are all physically and or mentally disabled. The middle one has high blood pressure and needs to undergo dialysis. The nephrologist, Hong Su Chun, provides him with hygiene education. During the cleaning process, crocodiles and mice appeared from time to time. The young medical team were inevitably scared by such a harsh living environment. If I encounter similar cases in the future again, I will put myself in their places and consider if they need any assistance at home, or do I need to seek assistance from some social welfare organizations, because we can only help in medical aspect. This should be considered as part of the humanitarian medical service. Apart from providing medical care, we need to understand patients' living environment and backgrounds. For example, if an elderly is admitted to our hospital, we need to know about his family support. At present, the three brothers are taken care of by their aunt, who also has vertigo and is unable to undertake the massive cleaning task. The help from the medical team and volunteers greatly relieve her concerns. The medical team and volunteers have saved me a lot of time and effort. The three brothers are currently unable to help. The middle one has asthma and needs dialysis. The eldest brother was admitted to the emergency this morning. Only the youngest brother can help. The preliminary cleanup was completed in the morning. The volunteers will then sort the garbage that has been removed from the house. Although the weather is hot, the young medical team has learned a lesson which helps to cultivate their compassion in future medical care. 
Cici Foundation is seizing the end of summer to host a summer camp for elementary school children from New Taipei City to give them the experience of being a farmer for a day. Wearing a straw hat, the young participants are heading to the farm right alongside Cici volunteers to be farmer for a day. Many parents don't have the time to take their children outdoors. I feel it's important to give kids an open space to learning. Actually, most of these kids are locked indoors, playing on their computer or cell phone during the summer. So getting outdoors and being in nature is good for them. This is Suji Foundation's summer camp for elementary school age students, where they learn lessons underneath the big blue sky. I'm learning how to be a farmer. I thought I can plant the seedlings, bury it in mud, and then it will grow. I didn't know it needed fertilizer to grow. Besides experiencing the laborious task of being a farmer, volunteers also arrange for the participants to head into the kitchen to make their own lunch. I've never cooked before. Today we picked vegetables from the garden. I then cut up the vegetables, cooked it, and ate it. Cooking is very difficult, but upon completion, it felt gratifying. From the day of being a farmer, these children have learned lessons they couldn't have learned from a textbook, which is the best preparation for the upcoming school year. The four-day Guangzhou Taiwan Commodities Fair ended with more than 1,000 Taiwan enterprises participating in event. An invitation by the local Taiwan Affairs Office allows Ciji to set up a booth to introduce its operations and attract more people to join the ranks of volunteers doing good deeds. The 2019 Guangzhou Taiwan Commodities Fair was held at the Panzhou Exhibition Center, featuring local import and export commodities. Ziji was invited to set up a booth and participate. Our main concern is to let the wider public understand the spirit and humanity of Ziji through the exhibition. Ziji's exhibition area is divided into three sections. Touring the exhibition stall allows one to learn more about environmental protection, biotechnology, one can better understand plastic recycling can make clothes and blankets. And although we're all small individuals, everyone can do our part to make a contribution to the world. Ziji's words and actions revise the spirit that there's love in the world. Some people or some teams can believe that Ziji can do this. It is very touching. From 9 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, my legs hurt a bit, but my heart is very happy. Guangzhou Ziji volunteers hope that the exhibition will inspire more people to enter the ranks of Ziji to do good deeds. One method of controlling red fire ants is to inject pesticides into the ant hill. In recent years, the use of bats has been more commonly used, so it may take six months to be effective. Fortunately, a domestic research team has found that the natural enemies of red fire ants are actually local ants. The frog is a natural enemy of many insects, but it is a large meal for red fire ant colony, which can attack and kill it. Red fire ants actually have a considerable negative impact on local ecology. Once it invades, some of our local creatures usually disappear. Experts say that the invasion of red fire ants has made it difficult for local ants to survive. Some native ants will be destroyed by red fire ants or driven away, causing the local habitat or environment to become less diverse. Losing diversity is bad for the environment. In addition to the spread of red fire ants by land and flood, another worry is that male ants from April to October every year can fly in the sky to mate.
Breeding fire ants can fly about 300 meters into the sky. This is close to the height of our Taipei 101 building. It will form a cloud of ants and then it will follow by a nuptial flight. The wind direction will lead it to fall in a radius range of 2 to 3 kilometers, which is its potential diffusion. The queen will fly out usually 1 to 3 kilometers depending upon conditions. This is the scope of the nuptial flight. By biological control can be useful as these ants need a suitable location to build a nest and reproduce. They must have a suitable environment. And if there are too many natural enemies in the environment, there is no way to build a nest and it can't spread. However, the pesticide use in Taiwan has reduced the natural enemies of red fire ants. We humans have caused the expansion of red fire ants because we have disposed of some of the ants through pesticides, which could have resisted them naturally in the environment. An invasion of red fire ants is actually very aggressive. Many local ants in Taiwan are not their enemies. Only a few, like a five or six species, can resist them. Like the black smiley ant is able to compete with it. Red fire ants have invaded Taiwan for more than 15 years and are becoming more and more localized. In addition to traditional bait and pesticides, emerging biological control has now become part of the front line of epidemic prevention. The virus was originally from a group of red fire ants. After an infection, it like our cold, these red fire ants themselves will not die, they will just weaken, so there will be less competitiveness in the natural environment. This virus will only infect red fire ants and it will not infect other ants, so we chose this method. The virus that causes the red fire ant to catch a cold does not infect the black spiny ant and other ants. Therefore, the research team allowed the black spiny ants to eat a syrup containing the virus, then put them in the area of red fire ant infestation. When the two compete for food, the black spiny ant will transmit the virus to the red fire ant. The red fire ants will become weak and die, and their nest will be replaced by the black spiny ants. Using these biological tactics, the black spiny ant will be more advantageous and attack red fire ant nests. Of the original 100 red fire ant nests, black spiny ants attack the majority with only 20 remaining red fire ant nests. Biological control using black spiny ants moved from the laboratory to the wild two years ago. We are now in the middle of a one hectare field. The replacement rate of the black spiny ant is about 80%. It's effective in controlling the number of red fire ants. It's also the most natural control method. The biggest enemy of ants turns out to be other ants. Scientists use this method with viruses to find the most effective method of epidemic prevention, as well as reducing environmental pollution. Large-scale uses of pesticides may cause secondary damage to the ecology. Regardless of whether you are doing research in Taiwan, the United States, or Australia, they consider methods used and the impact on the environment. To control red fire ants, it is best to avoid use of pesticides and chemicals. Biological control methods are showing promise, and when combined with current epidemic prevention measures, excellent results can be achieved. Although the red fire ant are a foreign species, they have already taken root in Taiwan and may not be completely removed. However, finding the right ecological balance is an important issue for everyone. Zizi attended the 2019 Los Angeles Tea Festival to share with the participants Taiwan's culture as well as tea story through the process of tea testing. We will leave you with these images. Thanks for watching and see you next time.